Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to do a look in on our clothing bins. This is my Eat My Shirt bin. And then after this, then we're going to look at the Eat My Jeans bin. So first things first, I'm seeing the top of this is super dry. I did bring water down here to um, help that out. Uh, the bubble wrap has not been doing 100% of the job, or at least not very well. So I'm going to shake that out. This is one of the new t-shirts. It's not really, I mean, it still definitely looks dirty, but it's, it's not been eaten on very much. So I'm going to fluff the bin up here, which it has uh, the combination of red wigglers, European night crawlers, and blue worms. And it also has the prepared paper bedding. And I am really just feeding this like a normal bin. I am giving it, you know, food scraps, etc. It's not like I'm just trying to feed them t-shirts. So let's go through the bin and see how they're doing. The, you know, top was pretty dry, but the bottom, bottom's pretty good. So they did have some place to go that is comfortable for them. And even though the, uh, the basement is about 67 degrees Fahrenheit, the worms seem to be pretty active. They're about normal size and normal color. Now, I have read in one of my books that if you find worms that are pretty white, almost, for their species, like if you know what kind of species you have, and they look very pale, that's an indication that they're not feeding very well. So, you know, maybe looking at this worm versus this worm, obviously there are two different kinds of worms. That's a blue worm. And this is one of my European night crawlers. Let's see if I can find another one. So there's another Euro. And you can tell that, you know, if they're eating really well, then they have a good color. And if they're not, then they are pale, according to the book. All right, I'll keep digging here. Not sure what I fed last. Um, now, if you're thinking this bin looks pretty full, you would be right. I do tend to start out with a large amount of bedding to give them more area to work through. I don't usually piecemeal it. Uh, normally, I start out with a whole bunch of, of my prepared bedding, which is the shredded cardboard, the coconut coir, and then I add um, eggshell and kelp meal or liquid kelp, one of the two, depending on what I have around my house. So that bedding, you know, is part of their food as well. That will get turned into castings. And if I get a little, kind of a little scraping here, you can see the castings that they've been making on the side of the bin. So I'm just going to fluff that up, move that around. Here's my t-shirt. Put that in the corner. And we'll just keep keep flipping through. This is a very new, new bin. Uh, I'll have to put below how long it's been going, but not very long. You can still see very clearly that the bedding is, is intact. So these worms have a long way to go before I harvest anything. Just making sure I break up any of the clumps so I don't go anaerobic on anything. Kind of flatten that back out again, and then I'm going to move this dry wad of paper to one corner, and we're going to add some, some water to that. And I just use um, tap water that's been resting for a couple of days. The, if you live in a municipality that adds chlorine to um, sanitize the water, it is a good idea um, to let it rest for two or three days or add the drops that you add to a fish tank to get rid of the chlorine. Um, it's a pretty good idea to do that before you use it with your worms. Um, I had fish tanks before I had worms, so it's pretty much a habit for me to do that. I usually let it sit out. Uh, worms aren't super, super sensitive to the chlorine and the chloranamines. Um, but I try and, you know, I don't want to damage the young ones if the, if the very young worms, you know, are more sensitive than the adults. So I usually try and give it at least three or four days of sitting after I get it out of the tap. If you have well water that doesn't have the chlorine in there, 
uh, or if you use reverse osmosis water, uh, then you're probably in good shape. You don't have to worry about what us uh, people with municipal water systems worry about. So I've got a bit of a, a thing of water here. I'll probably add, I don't know, a couple water glasses of water. Kind of mix that in, give it a little bit of time here. And let me get them some food because they look like they're super low on food. Okay, so the theme is going to be potatoes. And since we just got that dry paper, i um, going to hide it underneath there and get these potatoes started. But they are pre-frozen potatoes that kind of had desiccated. Gift from CC. I'm also going to put some water over here on that um, t-shirt because I, I don't think that was wet enough for them to be working on it. All right. So that's it for this t-shirt bin. Let me go find the rest of the clothing that I'm trying to make my worms eat. Okay, here we are with the Eat My Jeans bin. And looks like the worms are playing in the bubble wrap here. All right, let's see what's going on. Well, we've got quite a bit of the... Uh, little pill bugs. Oh, and look what's going on right here. These are two worms that are mating. I know, party foul, but I want you to be able to get a cool picture of it. So you can tell that they're attached and that they have a mucus band right here and right here that is keeping them attached until they can add the sperm and the eggs together and then when they come apart, the mucus band will slip off the head of each worm, and then that's why you normally find two cocoons in the same place. So I'm gonna bury them and uh, give them a little bit of privacy. Um, after all that disruption, I'm reasonably sure it's <laughs> already been disrupted. But let's, let's kind of move things over here. Lots of isopods. Uh, lots of springtails. I'm not sure if you're able to see that. Nice, nice amount of cocoons here and here. So they're happy in here. They're making cocoons. So let me kind of excavate the blue jeans and see where we are at. Okay. where I started here. So they're all inside. The uh, worms and the springtails are all completely inside the blue jeans. And also, I'm not really sure if those are mites or what right there. I'm going to have to zoom in really close. But we've got pot worms, we've got isopods, and look what they're doing already. That's, that's pretty amazing. From the last time that we looked in, this was not like this. The jeans only had ripped a little bit at the waistband, but they are definitely making fast work here. Okay, looking at this fold, you can still see some of the oranges, and they've got a good amount of springtails, and I'm willing to bet those are mites. Let me put a close up here. Okay, kind of looking more, they're liking the layers of the blue jeans, and then I think, I don't, I don't know if this was melon, I, I'll put a picture there below what we fed them last time. Maybe some rice, I'm not sure, it's hard, it's really hard to tell, but picking up this leg, and then this leg, kind of looking underneath the blue jeans and seeing what's going on under there. I don't see any other food, but I do see a nice pretty cocoon right there. 
So the moisture in here is really good for the worms. Uh, let's see, more citrus. This is obviously much wetter than you would want it to be if you were going to try and harvest anytime soon. Let me kind of put this over in the corner so there's not as much under the blue jeans. Okay, so let's try and build this back up. All right, so there's one layer of blue jean and their old food. Let me get them some new food. Okay, got some frozen potatoes here. Cover that up there and get a little bit more. I think there's probably over a pound of worms in here, so I am trying to make sure that I give them enough food, because I really have been only checking on this maybe once a month or so. Um, here's the back side. Looks like they've almost done with their um, orange, and I think that's a grape stem. So we'll give them some potatoes on that side too. go. Let's see. Maybe some in there. These potatoes were frozen just a little while ago, so they don't smell real bad. But they're going to smell pretty bad after a little while. So I want to make sure that I cover everything up really well. That's why I excavated some stuff so that there would be enough to cover cover everything. Uh, if anybody saw me flip a worm out, I do check <laughs> afterwards to make sure none of my little buddies have flown the coop. They all get put in. Put in? Ah, I need more coffee. They all get put back so that they can continue the work on the blue jeans. But I think everything's fluffed up here really good. I'm, I'm amazed at the progress that they're making already on these blue jeans. All right, well, let's get the next bin. All right, here we are at the last t-shirt bin. So let's see what these guys are doing. Seems like it's drying out a little bit, and it also looks like maybe something was in there playing. But here is the string from the t-shirts. I'm going to leave that off to the side. Hopefully the worms will... So this t-shirt is doing really well. Lots of bits and pieces here. Not all, you know, nothing very recognizable as of yet. But it does look like parts of it are drying out. So we're going to probably try and put all the dry stuff together and uh, make sure that that gets wetted down again. Orange. Avocado. Yeah, it's weird how some of it is really dry. Maybe this has something to do with what AV was talking about. The uh, super dry stuff is towards the center of the room or something. Maybe. I don't know. Put that over there. Let's see what this t-shirt is doing. Looks like we've got a bit of a worm ball. A little, little tiny bit of a worm ball. Nothing super exciting. In a couple of months, worm balls will, will be a constant source of enjoyment for us. But right now, when it's cold, I just don't, I don't see as many. Down in the basement, where it's about 65 to 68 degrees. Looks like we still have a fair amount of citrus and kiwi in here. Kind of fluff that up. I'm still gathering all of the stuff that's too dry together. And then we will put that together so that it can stay wet. So let's look at the t-shirt and see what it's doing. 
not much. Not seeing any any work on that so far. So going to kind of reduce its overall size here. Yeah, so that happened. Uh, the camera overheated and quit, and there we are. The Kloofnitz version of what just happened after that was that I put some rotten potatoes on top of the t-shirt and covered it up and gave it a little extra bedding on top. So if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody have a good day.